Helen, how helpful is it as a GP for a patient to come in to you having taken uh, like a, a home uh, allergy um, test and then saying, look, I've got, I'm, I think I'm allergic to all of these things. Question I get asked a lot um, working privately and as a GP, I just want a test. I don't want anything else. And my answer is always no. And it's because the most crucial bit of taking, of like understanding if someone has allergies is taking the history first. So finding out have you ever eaten this food? If you did, what's happened? Mm-hmm. Because if if they've eaten it and they have no symptoms, and, and we're talking here about IgE allergies, so ones that involve immunoglobulin E, so that's hive, swelling, vomiting, anaphylaxis. If they have none of those symptoms and the test is positive, it doesn't mean you're allergic. The other tricky thing that we have is that people, if they've had definite allergic symptoms, very occasionally the test is negative. And then if you believe that test, you're going to go on and potentially put yourself at risk. And that notoriously happens with sesame. So we need to be very careful. And finally, my biggest group, group, risk group are people with eczema, particularly young children. And if they've never eaten that food before, the test means nothing. So we have no idea now what context to put this test result in. You know, are you allergic or not when you've never eaten it? And children with eczema have risks of having very high allergy tests, but are only 50 to 60 percent accurate. And we have very good evidence then saying if you don't eat foods regularly, you're going to become allergic. So based on a test would say, well, for safety, you're going to have to not eat it. And actually, we just don't know whether you should be or not. And although families get very anxious about weaning, I do say, look, you know, the risks of death are 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 pretty much zero in a weaning child. It's much better and safer to give the food, know whether we're dealing with allergy or not, rather than avoid it, allow potentially allergy to form, and then have much higher risk of anaphylaxis and death as you become a teenager.